Hi Sandy. Hi. I know that your consult activity gives you a very positive vision over the status of the BPM in industry at the moment. What do you think, how the BPM is perceived? I think in many cases BPM is still seen as a way to control what people do rather than to support their work and, and that can be a bit of a problem. So it's changing into something now that can be much more flexible but many people still think of BPM as being very rigid for very rigid processes and very structured flows. So we, um, they, we need to change somehow how people think about it. So it's, you, you are the world recognized as expert on social BPM, right? If you had to define the concept in one sentence, how would you describe social BPM? The state of social BPM now is with having BPM, or with having social capabilities built into a BPM system so that we can do collaboration and ad hoc processes in the, right in the context of the, of the BPM system. I think that what's evolving, however, is being able to have a BPM system interact with other social platforms as well. So that's, we're starting to see more of that to get outside the boundaries of just what's done within the BPM systems. Do you think companies are ready to embrace the social revolution? Uh, I wish they were, but I don't know if they are. It's just, we're still seeing so much, and much of the, of the uh, tutorial that I gave here this week was on some of the struggles that we're going through to have adoption of social DPM within organizations. And many of the problems are around the management views of how things should be done and stricter control over how things should be done. So I think that until we can start to have some changes in the organizational culture, many companies are not ready for it yet. Do we take fun? Yes. So which field or market sector do you think will we, we could benefit more from adopting the BPM? Well, I think really any business could because Social BPM is just a, a tools for allowing people to be able to do work the way that they work naturally. So it's really any company that needs to be able to have processes that can change, that has knowledge workers that need to be able to do work in the way that they know is the best way to do it. So we see examples of that uh, certainly in very dynamic industries, but even in very conservative companies like financial services, we see lots of examples of companies that can benefit from the, the social capabilities of collaboration and dynamic processes. What is the current maturity level of social BPM and when do you think we reach the mainstream adoption? The maturity of the products, so we need to talk about the maturity of the products and then the maturity of the adoption of the products. So they're, they're, they're very different. Yeah. Things. So the technology is starting to reach maturity. We're seeing many of the capabilities that are um, emerging now in, in things like activity stream, process activity streams, things like runtime collaboration and uh, collaboration during process discovery. Those are becoming fairly common in many of the BPM offerings. Um, there is not as much standardization as there should be, and also every vendor has their own definition of what social BPM is, so okay. they're still defining what the environment is, but it is starting to reach some level of maturity. The, the adoption, however, I think is still early. Mm -hmm. It's just like I said, the companies in many cases are just not ready for it yet, so we're starting to see some use cases of social BPM being used, but in many cases it's just, it, it, it's a difficult uphill to battle still. It's too early, yes. I think it will be another few years before we start to see some significant use cases in the words being adopted inside the crisis. And then, so what do you think are the main reasons to prevent the social BPM adoption? Besides not being ready. Well, the key ones are really those um, those cultural issues. So we see management not wanting to give up control. Um, I had an interesting discussion earlier that somebody said, well, there are somebody of their father's generation, who they said was my generation too. But <laughs> it's probably true. But somebody of uh, that generation who is in management would does not like to do these social things. And he said, is it because the generation? And I don't think it is because of the generation. It's because the people who are in positions of power, in many cases, see social as uh, an erosion of their power. And so there is a correlation because older people tend to more be in power. But I don't think it's because they're older that they're not social. I think it's because they're in this management position and they see social as a threat. Right. Yes. So I think that's one of the biggest things is just this organizational culture. 